opponents under 100 points. What has been working so well this season? At this point? Uh, the defense. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, simply stated. I mean, uh, we've held, I, I think, on the season now, nine teams under five, uh, under 100 points. Um, to hold these guys to 95, 43 from the field. Uh, the three-point defense, I think, has been a big part of that. Uh, we're one of the better three-point defensive teams. Um, and we get in trouble with the paint at times. But tonight, we took away the three and took away the paint. Uh, 29 assists, obviously, plus 15 on the glass. Uh, when we have 25 or more assists, we win at a high level. When we I rebound our opponent, uh, we win at a high level. And it was great to, to – I just thank whoever came in last night and took the – whatever's on that rim so we can make some shots tonight. We appreciate that. But making 19 threes was great to see as well, TJ, because, um, you know, we've been taking care of it at a high level, but we still haven't been making shots. And tonight I thought we generated a lot of really good looks and we made them. Zero. We played slow for seven years. Uh, I think pace is one of the most stupid things I've ever heard of. Coach, a week ago, your bench trouble scoring tonight, 63. Yeah. How do you explain it? Uh, well, I think it comes down to making shots. I mean, uh, PJ made four threes. Jermichael hit two. Bones hit four. Fockle hit three. Zeke hit two. Uh, and we haven't seen the ball go in like that uh, probably this season, Vic. Um, so it was great to see those guys score, shoot at a high level. But also, I thought they pl played their asses off. I, I thought their defense – flying around even when they made a mistake i felt that we just had that fly around multiple effort mentality uh, and that allowed us to get out and run and get some really quality looks that we didn't make tonight so uh yeah for our, our bench to outscore there 63 to 38 uh that was just really fun to see and those guys have been uh, working their butts off and, and and helping us when they come into the game can you take us through what's going on with Yeah, so what that means is that he's got a sore lower back. Okay. <laughs> um, and you know what the weird thing, is, Vinny, is that I didn't know anything about it. We come out to start the game, and Dan Shemensky, our trainer, um, he said to me, hey, hey, Will's back just tightened up. I mean, literally that second. So, uh, we'll, we'll, I don't think there's anything serious. Obviously, he's just warming up and kind of felt something back there. So, make the smart decision to hold him out tonight and see how he feels uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, and see if he's able to play against Dallas. If not, we'll have a couple of days before our home back-to-back -back, uh, against Philly and Chicago, and uh, hopefully we can use that time to get a lot of our guys rest and, and get them as healthy as possible. Do you sense that there's any more flow or, or just rhythm to the offense over the last couple of games than there was earlier in the season? Yeah, I, I think one thing that really stands out to me, aside from the flow, Harrison, is uh, the turnovers. I think our first six games of the year, uh, we were averaging close to 20 turnovers. I think our last seven games were number one in the league in turnover rate. So that, that is like going from we were like amongst the worst to now in the last seven games we're amongst the best in terms of valuing the ball. That helps flow. That helps continuity. That allows us to get a shot off uh, every time down the floor. Um, I think Bones off the bench has been terrific. You know, I think he's helped that unit out a lot. Uh, proud of Faku. He was a young man that, you know, uh, hadn't played the last couple of games, and he goes out tonight, and I thought he put on a show. I thought he was terrific. But, um, yeah, I think we're just settling down, valuing the ball, and uh, and getting more and more comfortable playing with each other. Is that a concerted effort by him sometimes to make sure he gets people involved, or was that just the flow of the game? I think it's a combination. You know, I think Nicola knows – uh, the deeper we get in the games, the more he's going to take have to take over with his scoring uh, and be that go-to player for us. Um, early in the games, I'm calling plays for other guys as well to get them into a rhythm. So now if they do start double-teaming Nicola, they've had the ball in their hands. They've made plays. Um, but yeah, but that's what Nicola does. He's going to read the game, um, and whatever is given to him, he's going to take, and he's going to try to make you pay for guarding him whatever game plan you've come up with. And you know, that's what great players do. You know, 28, 9, and 9 in 28 minutes is a pretty good night. Uh, Nicola's rim defense is something that he's been kind of killed for over the last couple of years. It's like the one thing people have picked out about is you know, his defense that he's supposedly not that great at. But the numbers are much better this year. Just, have you seen just individual improvement in him mm -hmm. protecting the rim this season? Oh, without a doubt. I, I think he's underrated defensively. I really do. 
Uh, obviously, people are going to say, well, you're biased, you're his coach, but uh, that's an easy, he's an easy mark because he's not that shot blocking athletic guy that's making highlight plays at the rim. Well, I, I think you have to look at the block he had at the end of the game to help us win the other night, his hand eye coordination. He's top 10 in contested shots per game. Uh, but to your point, around the basket, he's not going to be an above the rim shot blocker. So he can use angles, he can use his body, he can use a rule of verticality to be a really impactful defender. And, you know, if you have the number two defense in the NBA after 13 games, um, Nicole is the anchor of our defense. He's doing something right. People put him in a million pick and rolls. We, we've, we're, we're much more versatile with how we guard pick and rolls than we have been in the past, giving different looks. And he's really adjusted to that and gotten comfortable with that. So yeah, I, I think he's been outstanding on the defensive end. Mm -hmm. but is there something you like about him as kind of a, a stabilizing force for that bench unit? Exactly right. And I told PJ that. I said, listen, I'm going with Austin because I like to keep you in your role. You know, I mean, he, I could easily have gone to PJ when Michael went down. Um, I liked playing big. It speaks to Aaron's versatility. I think Jeff Green with Nicola has been outstanding. Um, and, and allowing PJ to stay in that off the bench role, keep his minutes around 24 or so. Um, you know, I don't want to run him into the ground. He's too valuable for us. Um, and that also allows us, if we need to close with PJ, which we will at times, you know, that he, he's not playing 35 minutes a night. That he's got something left at the end of game. So, uh, yeah, that, that was definitely the decision. I wanted to keep PJ and Bones in their respective roles off the bench. Austin, obviously, 10 year vet. Uh, let him go out there and guard their guards and try to help us out on the offensive end. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.